Even when the card is limited and it's known that it's limited is why I'm confused for Gazelle. Um, because I, I, I can actually explain this. I can actually explain this, why it works. Okay, so to explain, right, the reason why this interaction works. So the interaction in question, right, is specifically pertaining to when you open like a salad uh, and sign up mining, right? So the logic behind this, okay, the logic behind this, like say for example, you have like other cards in hand or whatever, right? Say you have all this in hand, this is like your opening hand, which don't get me wrong, is a pretty good opening hand. So if you activate sign up mining and you discard Foxy, add Gazelle. I'm gonna explain to you guys why the Gazelle is allowed to activate our resolution of this chain. <laughs> The same reason why, um, like the rocket recharger can activate, uh, but not if it's summoned by Quad Boral to the field. Okay, the reason why you're allowed to declare the uh, the gazelle here and to activate it uh, is specifically because when it comes to hand triggers, Konami made it. Uh, gazelle is a bad example. It's limited. No, but I'm explaining specifically. That's that's the main reason why. Talking about Gazelle is like an interesting one, right? So say Gazelle was unlimited. There's no way for you to like genuinely know whether or not your opponent already had a Gazelle in hand or not because this is a private knowledge location. Search judgment arrows. Mind crush, judgment arrows. I don't have judgment arrows. So because there's no way for your opponent to know whether or not you had a Gazelle in hand already, you are allowed to activate it. Now, the real question is, why are you allowed to activate it if the card is at one? You know for a fact he didn't have another Gazelle in hand because the card is limited. The reason why is not because Konami says, oh, because it's not 100% whether or not you had one, you can activate. It's that Konami took the concept of if the card isn't limited or something like that, they took the concept of your opponent wouldn't be realistically able to know. Let's make a general rule that a card in hand or in a private knowledge location does not already need to be in that location when its trigger is met in order to act to be able to activate it simply needs to be in that location on the resolution of a chain where that trigger was met in order to be able to activate the logic behind it is yeah you wouldn't know whether or not he had a gazelle in hand first but even though it like even though it's at one this is a general rule that they made that is also applied to cards that are also at one. It's for that multi-faker activates in hand. This is the exact same reason why multi-faker activates in hand, yes. It works the same way if the only cards in hand are mining and a salad, yeah. Even if you have, even if this is your hand, right? So say this is your hand, right? You activate mining, pitch Foxy, and you add the gazelle. Even though you know for a fact he doesn't have another gazelle in hand, this is simply a universal rule that Konami have made when it comes to uh, triggers more often than not in the hand. Like I say private knowledge because like it can happen with like triggers in the deck, but that's like very far in between. More often than not, it's going to be hand triggers only. But when it comes to, to triggers in the hand like this, they simply need to be in the hand where they meet their trigger on resolution of a chain where their trigger occurred. Basically, that's that's the whole situation of it. It's, a, it's an odd situation. But it's specifically in order to avoid, like, players being like, oh, you already did you already have another one in hand? Prove it, show your hand, and stuff like that. Like, say, for example, Gazelle was at two, okay? Assume, assume that this spinny is a Gazelle, okay? This spinny is a Gazelle. And Gazelle's at two. And I make this play. I go, fox like, mining pitch Foxy, add Gazelle, and I declare Gazelle. If, by the rules, you wouldn't be able to activate the Gazelle, then the opponent would be like, oh, prove you have a second Gazelle that, to, pro to show that you already had in hand. In order to avoid that kind of confusion, that kind of scenario, they just made it so that the card just has to be in hand on resolution of when it met its trigger. Now, the reason why this is different from the field, uh, if you look like that Dragon Link scenario, like here, I'll, I'll, I'll put a deck together just to show you guys the Dragon Link scenario. So the reason why this is different, right? The reason why this is different. Uh, yeah, so the reason why uh, Rocket Recharger with the Quad Boral is different to, to like the Salamangrid scenario. And I'll even I'll even show you guys the interaction with the Striker Dragon. So say you have Striker Dragon there and you have both of these in the graveyard. You can legally use the effect of Striker Dragon sending itself to the graveyard, 
adding the rocket recharger to hand, and then even if the rocket recharger is the only card in your hand, uh, it applies that same logic that you had when it came to the uh, Salamangri Gazelle, where you are allowed to activate the recharger, send itself to the graveyard, and summon back like your tracer or something, for example. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm gonna explain to you why this is a little bit different when it comes to Quad Boral Dragon. These interactions only happen when it comes to trigger effects in the hand. So if you use the effect of Quad Boral popping itself and you summon back the Rocket Tracer and the Rocket Recharger, you can't trigger the Rocket Recharger here because that rule that it only has to be in the location where its trigger would activate on resolution of the chain only applies to the hand and private knowledge area, private knowledge locations. When you consider the field here, the Rocket Recharger needs to have already been on the field when your Rocket Monster was destroyed in order for your Rocket Recharger to be able to activate. So here you won't be able to activate the Rocket Recharger, even though this interaction is essentially the same. Um, the reason why it's different is specifically because of the location where the Rocket Recharger is. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. It wasn't on field to see that trigger. But when it comes to the hand, like I said, Konami have an official rule that if it's in the hand, it doesn't need to have been in the hand when the trigger was met. It just needs to have been in the hand on resolution of when that trigger was, of a chain in which that trigger was met at some point. So that's basically the how that works. Um, I know it's it's pretty confusing. Like I don't even I don't even know why this whole big interaction like like was created. Like it was specifically just because like they didn't want you to have like the hand verification rule stuff. But with the new hand verification rule, they could they could straight up like reverse this and it wouldn't change a whole lot because you don't have to verify things in hand anymore it's funny because that was printed as part of the effect in several cards like with darkest diabolos so yeah that's that's a really good uh a really good in, like scenario to talk about is when you have cards like darkest diabolos so this is why you see some cards that have weird text uh such as the following here if a dark monster you control is tributed except during the damage step you can special summon this card from your graveyard if it was there when you tributed or hand even if not this is the reason why cards have that text that says even if not you will only see even if not printed on cards that can summon themselves from the hand or from another location like straight up this is the reason why it's because if they can summon themselves from the hand or from the graveyard they can't summon themselves from the graveyard if they were not in the graveyard when the trigger was met but they can summon themselves from the hand because of this rule that says that the card just needs to be in hand on a resolution of a chain in which that um in which that trigger was met so yeah that's basically it for why uh cards have the text like even if not and why you are allowed to trigger gazelle in the hand even if you only have uh like gazelle is at one and you add it off the sign at mining and both you and your opponent know full well you didn't have another gazelle um it's specifically because of the cards in the hand not needing to be already in hand when their trigger was met as opposed to cards on the field or in any public knowledge, knowledge location they have to be in that location already when their trigger gets met so it's a pretty interesting interaction to know and it's a pretty good one to know uh just so that you know you don't get like you know shit out of luck and and your opponent like tries to tell you no you can't activate that in hand you didn't already have it you can uh for this exact reason how am i gonna remember all that i'm gonna put it into a youtube video and you'll straight up be able to you know you'll straight up be able to uh watch it 17,000 times <laughs>